Hello, retro fans. It has been a bit quiet here on the channel, and uh, well, the main reason is that uh, I'm well, pretty busy with uh, normal life things like work and such. So <laughs> I had to um, cut short my um, well, spare time interests a little bit um, because it is actually well, a bit challenging, a bit demanding with all the crazy things going on uh, here in Europe. And uh, yeah, but um, I still kept an eye on uh, what's going on in the C64 scene. And uh, the main, well, source is actually, well, as usual, Forum 64. And um, I was able to get some new, well, deliveries uh, and uh, there has been some new projects going on and uh, yeah, so I thought it's about time to, well, have some progress in this area and uh, therefore I thought, well, let's get back to the basics, <laughs> do some soldering, do some testing of stuff and uh, trying to well build up some momentum i'm not sure whether i can uh, keep it for a while uh, because well as i said things are quite crazy here right now and uh, there are so much going on that it is sometimes a little bit hard to stay focused on certain things and uh, therefore yep long story short uh, let's move on and see what's uh, on my desk right now and um, here we go. I, well, <laughs> it looks a bit weird. <laughs> uh, I had to install so many updates on my PC. I haven't used it for, well, I think two months or something like this. And uh, things I really recognized is that um, OBS stopped to work. Uh, my loop deck controller stopped to work. I had uh, to update my NVIDIA drivers and so many things and uh, Windows updates on top. So it took me about two days to get through this uh, in, in total. But uh, now it's actually working again. And I was uh, brave, maybe a bit too brave and uh, went for the NVIDIA background removal feature in OBS. And uh, no, it isn't really looking very good. So I may uh, just go and disable this uh, because I think it is rather confusing than uh, really adding some beneficial effects to the video. Um, I had used NVIDIA Broadcast as a standalone application and routed the uh, video signal through this into OBS and uh, there was a, a background blur feature but uh, within OBS there is just background removal and as you have seen it isn't working as good as I want it to be. Primarily I think uh, because of the mix I, back, I am wearing back, uh, black gloves, I have a black chair, I got some black stuff in the background and um, that's kind of interfering. But, uh, well, anyway, that's actually not what I was uh, going to do today. As you can see, I got a bunch of parts on my desk. And uh, this is actually a very interesting project. Um, it feels like it's yet another diagnostic uh, cartridge thingy. And uh, there are actually a couple of them already. But um, this one has some, let's say, eye-catching features and uh, therefore I was really interested in to get this on my desk. And the very first thing we have to do is actually, well, solo it. Well, I think I got everything in place. So uh, just need to populate the ICs now. I have to check for the alignment. <laughs> and uh, no need 
Mm, cool. Yep, much better. And the prom. And then I think we are ready to go. Um, may I place this into the cartridge? Well, well, actually, why not? Let's go for it. Gonna make some space. So. Oh, that looks good. Very nice. But the case isn't perfect in terms of print quality. <laughs> it's actually a little bit reluctant to stay together, but uh, we'll see. Get this into place. I think that looks quite fine, but I may remove the rotation adhesive film, whatsoever it is called. So, Nice and compact. Let's make some space here. And I think we're going to need a C64. signals as well. <laughs> um. Okay, and some power. Supplies off. Ah, frequency measuring. Very cool. And the voltage as well. It's a little bit small. Let me see if I can. Find us a little bit. Now we can see the voltage. And there's supposed to be some Thank you. 
also of TC64 as well. Let's see if we can get one. Here it is. That looks funny. <laughs> Oh, sound test. I haven't connected sound yet. Hmm. And uh, it cycles through all of the tests. And uh, as I understand, there are different tests as well. So if we're going to change this and reset. Okay, let's test the other. Ah, it jumps directly into this. I haven't paid that much attention, but isn't this the same? Or is it something different? Ah, it's different, indeed, yes. So, cassette, keyboard, control port, serial port, user port, interrupt. Yeah, so um, this diagnostic tool requires the so-called harness, which can't be used for this cartridge, but uh, at least it is running through all of the other tests. Yep, and it is cycling as well. So you can use this for burn-in tests or whatever, reliable reliability tests. And uh, yeah, as I understand, this cartridge is working on the C128 as well, uh, which I can't test right now because I do not have one working, do not have one in working conditions here on hand. But yeah, it is indeed a very interesting cartridge and we may just throw it at a different C64 just to check something. So let me jump out of this one. Oh, come on. Let's see what we get on this stem here. Uh, now we got 4.9394 volts and uh, that's actually a different power supply so we can see a difference and uh, yeah that's that's pretty interesting so let's see if it is doing something as well yeah it is Yep, very cool. So <laughs> that's actually supposed to be a shorty, a short video, a vlog, whatever we want to call this. And uh, 
That's actually what I had in mind for this episode. So I will post the link to the forum 64 and uh, the GitHub page. I think there was one into the description. I'm looking forward to your comments. So let me know if this is something you uh, consider as useful. And uh, yeah, as usual, thanks for watching. Thanks for sub subscribing. Thanks for supporting me. Uh, feel free to consider this if you haven't done so yet. And uh, yep, let's see what I have in preparation for the next episode. As usual, thanks for watching. Bye bye.